This Week in IT. I look at Microsoft's new backup and storage service for Microsoft 365 and whether you even need to back up your data in the cloud. Plus, Windows Secure Boot might not be quite so secure after all. So stay tuned for all the latest. Welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I talk about everything connected to Microsoft 365, Windows and Azure. This week's episode is sponsored by our friends at Semperis. About 46% of the people who watched last week's video weren't subscribed to the channel. Now, as we go live today, we're on about 7,170 subscribers, and I'd love it if we could push that up to 7,200 this week. So if you'd like to see these kind of weekly news updates from Petri.com, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on the latest updates. Uploads. So let's talk a little bit about Secure Boot. Now, Secure Boot is really designed to make sure that ransomware and malware and what were called rootkits are not able to infect the system as soon as it boots up and get that very low level access to the system as it's booting because of course once you have that kind of access then you can do whatever you want to do and it's hard to detect those kind of rootkits. Now the idea behind Secure Boot is it doesn't rely just on Windows and the software to protect the startup process, it also relies on hardware so you have things like the trusted platform module that are helped to design and enable these kind of security technologies. Now the problem was that the the platform key that's used to protect the files as they boot up using Secure Boot was originally compromised back in 2018. Now, it was kind of expected that manufacturers would update this as part of the supply chain going forwards, but it's been discovered recently that that hasn't happened and that this compromised key has been used across many systems. And of course, it's a bit like having the same key to all the apartments in an apartment block. Once you've discovered that key, you can get access to all of these systems without any problems. And it's been shown in a proof of concept that it's really easy to get access to the systems that have this issue. Now you may be thinking, oh, another security issue with Windows, you know, Microsoft just can't get this right. Well, this isn't really an issue with Windows Secure Boot as such. What is the solution to solve this problem? Well, really it's quite easy and that's that device manufacturers need to update their firmware with a new key and push it out, you know, in the same way that they push out any normal firmware update to devices to their you know, endpoints. And that's something that we really need to rely on the manufacturers to do. Of course, Microsoft can help push this, maybe help facilitate it, but it's not really a Microsoft issue. It's a problem that the device manufacturers themselves need to look at and solve. So if you have devices that you think may be affected, it might be worth going over to the device manufacturer and checking out if they have any security alerts or update notifications on their site. And and of course, if there are any updates to the firmware that should be deployed. If there is an update to the firmware, then I suggest that you get it tested in your environment as quickly as possible, because of course, Secure Boot is a really important mechanism to preventing these rootkits and malwares hiding away on your devices. Microsoft announced that its Microsoft 365 backup and storage service is now generally available. But before I talk about that, here's a quick message from today's sponsor. Did you know that Active Directory is exploited in 9 out of 10 cyber attacks. Once cyber criminals control your Active Directory, it's game over. With access to AD, attackers can gain control of your entire network. And if AD goes down, business comes to a halt. And it's not just on-premises Active Directory that's under attack. Cyber criminals are targeting Azure Active Directory too. Attackers can gain entry in the cloud and move to on-premises identity systems or vice versa. To keep threat actors out, you need to find and fix Active Directory security gaps. Meet Purple Knight, your ally in defending against adversaries trying to breach your hybrid Active Directory environment. Purple Knight is a free Active Directory security assessment tool built by some Paris identity experts. 
With Purple Knight, you can spot Active Directory vulnerabilities before attackers do. Purple Knight scans your hybrid environment for hundreds of indicators of exposure or compromise in both on-premises Active Directory and Azure AD. Purple Knight gives you an overall security score and prioritized remediation guidance for fixing AD security vulnerabilities. Now, many organizations today, of course, have their important data in cloud services like Microsoft 365, or at least part of it. So the first question you might be thinking, well, do I really need to back up the data in a service like Microsoft 365? Isn't that Microsoft's responsibility? Well, the answer is kind of yes and no, uh, probably mainly. <laughs> uh, yes, you do need to back up that data because Microsoft says that this is a, a shared responsibility. So Microsoft implements various technologies to replicate your data, you know, using things like availability zones and geographic replication, failover and availability solutions so that they can meet their service level agreements to you. But at the end of the day, the actual restoration of the data, should there be a problem with malware, for instance, accidental deletion beyond some of the things that are built into services like OneDrive is ultimately your responsibility and not Microsoft's. And there's been some research to suggest that you know more and more organizations are struggling with this issue of restoring data should there be a problem with their data in services like Microsoft 365. Now to address that issue, Microsoft has released its own solution. It's called Microsoft 365 Backup. And there's also a storage solution that goes with it. Guess what? It's called Microsoft 365 Storage. And this basically allows organizations to back up users' OneDrive, SharePoint sites, and Exchange mailboxes. Now, if you're wondering why Teams is not included in that list is because while Teams is, of course, a product within the Microsoft 365 suite, it's really just a front end for data that sits in SharePoint, Exchange, and OneDrive. So there's no need to specifically back up Teams as an entity on its own. If you've got OneDrive, SharePoint, and Exchange covered, then all of your Teams data is also backed up. So much like you'd expect from a backup solution, you can restore uh, an entire mailbox, an entire entire SharePoint site, for instance, or you can do it on a granular level and pick individual items. Microsoft 365 Backup allows you to quickly restore data and to retain your backup data at the moment for up to 12 months. Microsoft is also providing an API for the storage solution so that third party vendors can hook into it. So where exactly are your backups stored? Well, they're stored within what Microsoft calls the trust boundary of Microsoft 365. And it uses multiple redundant backups, you know, so should one disappear for whatever reason, there's going to be another one stored somewhere. Pricing model is essentially pay as you go and it's 15 cents per gigabyte of data. Now, backup solutions for Microsoft 365 are not new. There are third parties offering these solutions like Veeam and Point, for instance. But of course, there are some issues around Microsoft's service. First of all, pricing. You know, people are looking at the pricing and thinking that probably it's quite expensive, maybe to some other solutions. There are questions around the lack of immutable backup. So immutable backup is essentially a backup of all your data that cannot be changed in any way. So for instance, if that backup server was to be infected with a ransomware, regardless of that, your actual backup data is always protected and you can restore a good copy of it regardless of what happens. And you could also argue, is it a problem to be having all your primary data essentially stored in the Microsoft of cloud and having the backup of that data also stored in the same cloud. Would it not be a better solution to have the option to store that data somewhere else? 
So, you know, that may be another reason why you might look at a third party. But nevertheless, for those who want the ease of use, for those who are prepared to pay for it, and for organisations that are not too worried about some of the disadvantages at this stage, like the lack of a mutable backup, for instance, then potentially this might be a solution for you. Let me know in the comments below whether you back up your Microsoft 365 data and whether you would consider Microsoft's new service or a third party solution. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up because that helps us get the video seen by more people on YouTube. I'm gonna leave you with another video on the screen that you might also find useful where I talk about Microsoft's resiliency advice about using deployment rings amongst other things after the CrowdStrike incident that of course happened already a few weeks ago. I'd also like to thank again our sponsor Semperis, but that's it from me for this week and I'll see you next time.